Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa. I'm so happy that you joined me today. I have a question for you. Do you like to go to the ocean? Today's story takes place on the seashore and it's called Marine Birds from the Northeast Coast, written and illustrated by Joanne Roach Evans. And you can listen to my author chat with Miss Joanne. I'll link it below. There are birds of the field and birds of the wood and birds that belong to the sea and its shore. If there is one bird that you may think of when you think of the sea, it is the bird that you most often see. Can you guess what it is? It is the seagull, of course. It even has the sea in its name. Most people call these birds seagulls because they are often located by the sea. In fact, they are just called gulls officially. Each gull is given their own name. This type of gull is a herring gull. This adult herring gull has a red mark under its beak, yellow eyes, and pink legs and feet. Herring gulls are quite common. You may even see them away from the coast. You can see their little pink legs and gray feathers on their back and wings and the white and black tail feathers. The ring-billed gull is also seen just about everywhere. Can you see the ring of black around its beak? That is where it got its name. For the first few years of their lives, both the herring gull and the ring-billed gull have a mix of white and gray or black feathers on their heads. When they are adults, they will have white feathered heads. The ring-billed gull has yellow eyes and yellow legs. Do you see the yellow legs? Can you find the white and black tail feathers? Look at the gray feathers on their back and wings. One of the biggest gulls of all is called the great black-backed gull. This adult gull has a red mark on its beak and pink legs like the herring gull. How can you tell them apart? The great black backed gull is the biggest gull on the beach. They have dark black feathers on their backs and wings. But watch out for gulls because they are scavengers and all scavengers are known to do the same thing. they will steal your food because scavengers will eat just about anything. They will even eat your sandwich. Although they can eat almost anything, they are much healthier when they eat their natural foods like insects, fish, crabs, and clams. Smaller seabirds that are related to the gulls are the terns. They are often seen flying over the water using their excellent eyesight to find little fish to eat. Terns dive headfirst from high in the sky, plunging into the ocean to catch fish underwater in their beaks. These terns are called common terns and least terns. They both have black feather caps. The least terns can look like little bandits with their black masks, but don't worry, they won't steal your sandwich. Do you see the common terns? They have orange beaks and feet. The least terns have yellow beaks and feet. In springtime, terns nest right on the beach. You sometimes see them flying back to their nest where they may have eggs or chicks to feed and protect. Shorebirds called piping plovers 
make their nests on the sand too. They do not dive for fish, but instead search the seashore for tasty things to eat. And you can see on the sign here, it says area closed, threaten birds nesting. So there are the different birds that are nesting there, like the least tern, the common tern, and the piping plover. It says if the birds are disturbed, parents may leave the nest, subjecting eggs and young to exposure of possible death, entering area violation of state and federal law. That means the sign is there to protect the birds in their nests so that their babies grow into adults and nobody harms them. A close relative of the piping plovers are the semi-palmated plovers. You can tell the difference between the two by the darker feathers, white neck collars, and black breast bands of the semi-palmated plovers. You may see piping plovers and semi-palmated plovers with other small shorebirds like sanderlings at the water's edge. They are all about the same size and forage by running, stopping, and pecking the sand for prey. Forage is to look for food. Prey are animals that are hunted for food. Sanderlings are another common shorebird. They are fun to watch. They run back and forth with waves. Sanderlings have pale feathers and longer beaks than the plovers. They use their long beaks to probe the sand for food, like little mole crabs and marine worms. Sanderlings are in the sandpiper family. A relative of the sanderling is the purple sandpiper. You may not see them on the sandy beach, but if you're up on a jetty, you may see them looking for food around the rocks. They eat many things that live on the rocks and in the seaweed, like periwinkles, small crabs, and the seaweed itself. Can you find the yellow periwinkles hiding in this seaweed? Out on the rocks and at the water, you can see the big black double-crested cormorants. It's fun to watch them diving for fish, crabs, and other marine creatures. Cormorants can dive underwater for more than a minute. When they are done diving, they find a place to stand and open their wings to dry out their wet feathers. Out on the water along a rocky shore, you might see a large and beautiful sea duck called a common eider. Eiders are the largest ducks on the North American coast. They can dive deep down in the ocean to catch mussels, crabs, and sea urchins hiding in the rocks. They can dive up to 65 feet. That's deeper than a telephone pole. Like many birds, the boys are more colorful than the girls. The male eider is striking in his black and white markings. The female soft brown coloring is perfect for hiding on her nest to keep her eggs and chicks safe. Whether marine birds spend their lives on the open ocean or migrate and nest along the coast, or if they dive for fish and crabs, or probe the sand for worms. Some of the most remarkable birds belong to the sea and its shore. And here you can look at all the birds we talked about. The seabirds, the shorebirds, and the sea ducks. And in the back, you can see part of the map of the United States. And you can see where these birds live along the Northeast Coast. Miss Joanne, the author, has written about more cool things about marine birds in the back. And a section about how you can help marine birds. I hope you enjoyed the story today. Remember, you can also catch the, the interview I did with Joanne Roach Evans and learn about what inspired her to write Marine Birds. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.